that are largely hidden. And these products are promises, grants, and sureties. These are the three essential products that the reserve banks, not private banks, the reserve banks, will support the communities in developing. And it's very exciting. So when we have a look through these, let's have a look at page five and let's have a look at what we mean. We say, for example, under the existing system, a loan is a sum of money or other asset which an individual group or other legal entity borrows from another with the condition that it be returned or repaid at a later date, including in additional charges. So we define their existing systems. We define what is meant by a deposit and a security. And what we say here, categorically, we say the products, not just the system, is rotten. A mortgage is a rotten product. Horrible, rotten, cruel product. Because it hides some of its most negative aspects. It steals your energy. And it leaves you with nothing more than a thin user front, which can be taken away from you, the rights of use under the Roman system, a flimsy user front that can be taken from you at any point through eminent domain and other legal constructs. And that's exactly what happens. Even if you're never behind on your mortgage, they can still take your property, and they do take people's property. Just because you see other people being eaten by the alligators doesn't mean the alligators can't come and eat you as well. So we come up with new clean products, products that have some morality and ethical basis on them. And if one of you is someone that feels a strong faith, whether it be Christian or Muslim or any faith for that matter, what we're saying here is here are products that are perfectly aligned to the scripture. They embody the scripture. They edify the scripture. And these products are promises, grants, and sureties. Now, on, on page six, we define what they mean. A promise is a formal oath to repay an amount of credit borrowed, including any administration fees and charges. Promises are equivalent to loans. The charging of rent and use of interest as a method of calculating costs is expressly forbidden in a promise. So it is a transparent product based on your honour. It's a transparent product based on your honour. Now, a grant is the conveyance of certain property into existing trusts or new trusts, including the temporary or permanent assignment of competent third parties as trustees for the administration of those assets for the benefit of one or more beneficiaries. Grants are equivalent to deposits. Insurities a fungible negotiable instruments representing financial value issued by an authorised juridic person in accordance with divine canon law and the laws governing the supreme financial system. And sureties are equivalent to securities. Now, of course, we have shares, but we're not talking about shares here. We're talking at the moment about the uh, equivalent of replacing loans, replacing deposits and replacing securities and then we go through and talk about the structure of promises now these are early work and these work needs it needs more work but what I'm trying to show you is just simply mirroring the existing system and saying why don't we start our own mortgages would be to perpetuate the corruption of their system we're not here to perpetuate the corruption we're here to heal we're here to fix so this is why it has been taking so long because without this thinking, we would merely be mimicking and perpetuating and providing safe harbour for them for a new kind of system. So the mechanics of a promise, we describe what they are, the principal charges and fees provided, the promise, the rights or purpose. We make it very clear. And then we define the different types of promises, whether they be secured or unsecured. And then we define how they can be used. And one of them is promised land. We've already spoken about promised land. You can go and get your promised land record now. 
Well, it turns out that one of the types of promises in the providing of credit is for promised land. You can read about that now. And personal promises, merchant promises, society promises and special promises. As I say, this will be extended and improved over time. But it's been a lot of thinking just to get to here. And then we talk about sureties and grants. And that gives you some background as to the types of products that the reserve banks will need to provide. Now, I want to switch a bit now. So that's some background about Supreme Financial System and the products of the Supreme Financial System. Quite a different approach to the existing system. Now, what I'm going to show you now is a further additional change to the system. And I'm going to ask you all, please, to go to the website for this particular example of Americas. That's A-M-E-R-I-C-A-S, Americas-Union.org. Americas-Union.org. And when you get to that site, Americas-Union.org, which I'm doing my, myself now, I want you all, please, to click on on the home page, the criminal code under the codes of law in the center. You'll see the link there, criminal code. I'm going to show you something under the criminal code that has never been done before. So go to Americas Union.org. On the home page, click on the criminal code. Now, when you get that page up, I'd like you to scan down to, and over time, please read this. And there's, this, this took many years to write. This one code took many years to write. But I want you to scan down to the bottom under 16 Offences Against Finance and Trade. And I'm going to ask you to have a look at Article 146. Article 146, which says, Offences Involving Establishment of Private Credit Institution." Okay, so when that comes up, Article 146, Offences Involving Establishment or Operation of Private Credit Institution. Now, I won't read it all. I'm going to just go through some of these key sections. A private credit institution is any privately owned entity that is established in whole or in part for the provision of money, capital, credit, loans or equivalent services involving promissory notes and any other forms of negotiable instruments. Now let's look at the next section, what the offence is. Offences involving establishment or operation of a private bank. Now after I explain this, I'll stop. Offences involving establishment or operation of a private bank is when a party deliberately acquires or possesses a significant interest in an entity or vehicle established or operating as a private institution for the provision of money, capital, credit, loans, or equivalent services involving promissory notes and any other forms of negotiable instruments. For the first time in history, the operation establishment of any kind of private bank, whether it be a reserve bank, central bank, investment bank, whatever, is unlawful. It is a crime for the first time in history. Why? Because these are no longer needed and the bankers, the private bankers, are the reasons for the war, the reasons for the pollution, the reasons for the slavery, the reasons for the corruption around the world. They are the problem. They will never and have never been the solution. And so for the first time in history, in black and white, it is going to be a, it is a crime, not going to be, it is a crime now for the establishment or the operation of a private bank. Why? We don't need them. All the credit you will ever need has already been created. The products are well developed and ready, very soon to be ready to be launched. And so there is no need for private banks. Now I want to cover a couple of other 
key codes of criminal code relating to uh, rendering unlawful the existing system. Look at Article 135 of the Criminal Code, offences involving the charging of interest. Okay, it's one thing to say interest is a sin. Let's talk about interest being a crime. And we define interest. Interest is any fee paid on borrowed assets, especially currency and or financial instruments. Interest may also be called usury. The distinction between interest and a service fee is that interest normally is calcul calculated directly from the size of the borrowed assets, whereas a service fee may demonstrate its calculation on the work done to provide the service, regardless of the size of the borrowed assets. And then we define the offence, the offence of charging simple interest. So let's go down to the offence of charging compound interest, 135.2. Charging compound interest is when, where a man or woman intentionally charges a fee against any borrowed asset such that it may be legitimately construed as a compound interest charge with the effect of it compounding on itself. Now I'm reading from the Americas-Union.org criminal code from the home page Article 135. Now, how serious do we treat the charging of compound interest as a crime for the first time in history back to what it used to be? It is a crime. We'll look at the red box at the bottom. Penalty conditions level six crime. It is a level to four or six crime if Compound interest is committed indirectly by the officer of a religious institution and the total value of the borrowed assets are granted to the value of more than 1,000 annual wages. It's a one to three type level six crime if it's committed by a bank or financial institution officer and the total value of the borrowed assets are granted to a society to the value of more than 1,000 annual wages. Now, what does that mean? It means that apart from a private bank being unlawful, if any institution is found guilty of compound interest of an amount greater than 1,000 annual wages, it is possible, it is possible that that officer could go to prison for more than 20 years. That's how serious we treat the crime of usury. Well, there's more. Let me continue. And I'll explain why I'm showing this to you. Apart from it being very important and historical, there is a very specific reason why I'm showing this to you after the introduction of the Supreme Financial System notes. Now, we're going to have a look at one more, which is, again, another important one. We're going to have a look at Article 131, Offences of operating as credit or currency agent. Okay. Article 131, Offences of operating as credit or currency agent. We define what a currency agent is. A currency agent is any man, woman, person, corporate or entity that transacts in the official currencies of the society and interposes themselves effectively as a third party between a valid chartered reserve bank of the society and members of the society or third party non-member relationships. In other words, a currency agent is someone outside of the reserve bank that interposes themselves between you or between the bank and some other non-society relationship. For example, a bank or someone else. Now, why is this a crime? This is a crime because an agent is just another way of someone setting up a very small version of a bank. We don't need agents. If a reserve bank needs a service, then the company or person, whoever is providing that service, will be employed within the bank to provide the service. There is no need and will never be a situation where we 
will approve any kind of agency